Hi friends, welcome to a new setup. Today I thought it would be fun to do a video about my project because I realised that I've been talking a lot about my project but I haven't actually told you what I'm doing or talked about it much at all properly um, and I thought it might be interesting for anyone who cares. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna, I've got a full day of doing my project today, a full day, it's 2 p.m. Um, so I thought I'd bring you along, tell you what I'm doing, show you some of the stuff I'm doing, maybe, I don't know. I don't know, it's, it's gonna be a wild ride. Um, I saw Paige do a video where she was learning how to code in R and I thought it would be interesting also to show you what I'm doing just because it's completely different to what she was doing and I thought it could be fun. I don't know, I'll link her video in the description box if you wanna go check it out. Um, but yeah, the plan for today, I firstly have to rejig my code that I've already done because I need to compare a different set of conditions, which should be pretty straightforward. I just need to replace all of the names of stuff um, and hopefully it'll actually work. I have a meeting with my project supervisor in about 40 minutes. Um, and then I also need to get started on some reading and making a presentation because I need to present what I've done so far to my supervisor's like lab team and I'm freaking out. I'm really stressed. I've never like, I've never had to present like my own research processy anything. And I'm just really worried that I'm not gonna actually be able to do it and I'm not gonna know enough about what's going on. Um, so yeah, that's the plan for today. Um, hopefully we will succeed in getting through enough. Um, I would say it's a full day of working, but it's not, it's 2 p.m. So <laughs> I thought we would start off by talking a bit about my project, um, what I've done so far. I'm gonna try and keep it in sort of vague-ish terms just because obviously this is a project for like a lot, like I don't know how much I should share like details wise. I don't know, I just thought let's let's stay on the safe side. I'm gonna tell you what I've done but like kind of vaguely. Um, also I will add timestamps to this video so if you don't care you can just skip. Um, but my project is in immunology, I'm doing pathology this year. Usually we would do projects in labs but unfortunately because of Covid we can't do that so pretty much all the projects are just data analysis on fun computer software. Um, so my project is about dendritic cells, it's looking at how the gene expression changes in different conditions and basically just seeing which pathways are significantly altered um, when you put the cells in different conditions. Um, so that's that's the general gist, that's as far as I understand. This is actually going to be a very good test because if you can't explain it to someone then clearly you don't understand it and I'm very worried that in fact I don't, actually I know for a fact I don't understand all of this but we're, we're gonna try. Um, so I'm using R to run RNA-seq analysis. They did an experiment in the lab, not me, um, and they got results where they had RNA transcript counts from the genes that would have been transcribed in each condition. Um, and so that's the kind of raw data of counts for each gene. And then you put it into R and you, you know, do stuff with it um, and you get your results which is basically a list of the genes that are most differently expressed between all the different conditions. But firstly we load, install, load all the packages, load up the data, it turns out that that is severely an issue um, considering it took me two hours the other day to load a package. I couldn't do it. I ended up basically deleting a load of stuff from other packages and it got to the point where R shut down. It said I had a fatal error. <laughs> And you can imagine me and like my little rookie self, like, what do you mean? Um, so yeah, basically you just pick the conditions that you want and make a separate table with just those. Then we made a meta table. Now see, I still don't really 
really understand where this comes in handy, but you do need it for future lines of the code, like you need the meta table to be able to produce the future tables. <laughs> so which cell type is in that sample group and what condition you used for that sample group. And basically it's just like an information table almost. Um, then we made a DSeq2 object, so that is the package that we used for the analysis. I think it must stand for like differential expression sequencing something. And then we moved on to quality control of the data. So this is where the fun starts of me not knowing what I'm doing. Um, so the first thing that we did was normalizing the raw counts that we got of like numbers of each transcript. So I think this is to basically be able to account for other factors that would cause a difference in the number of counts so that the difference that you end up with between each gene is purely because of the different levels of expression. Then we move on to making a heat map which is to check whether the replicates cluster together. Basically expect the samples that are identical cells and conditions to be, to like have really, really similar results. So they would like cluster together on a heat map when you're comparing the pairs. Um, and if not, then I think that means that you've got an issue with your data. Principal, principal component, I wanna say, analysis. Don't quote me on that. Um, but this again is to check whether the data fits what you're trying to do with it. I mm. You're basically just checking whether the variance between um, the different samples is mostly due to the difference in condition between those samples. Then we move on to running the DC2 analysis after we've quality controlled. Um, there's a bunch of like calculating mean slash variance, which I don't know why I did that. They just told me to do it. Oh, I should have mentioned, actually, I forgot. Um, I followed a data camp tutorial to do this, which was recommended to me by my supervisor. Um, if you're looking to learn how to use R or learn how to like run analysis, whatever, I would highly recommend data camp. The uni provided us access to it for our projects. I'm assuming you have to pay normally, but if you're really into it and you wanna like get started, the videos are actually really, really useful. It's so much easier than trying to like search it on the internet. Then we extract the results. So basically you would choose, it's kind of similar to A-level biology in a way, you would choose your alpha value threshold and your LFC threshold. So alpha is like the p-value, I believe. So um, you pick a number below which everything is significant. <laughs> Log for change, I believe, is basically just telling you how much the expression of that gene changes between the conditions. We did some log for change shrinkage, which it turns out I still don't understand. And then there is a package that allows you to import gene names and gene descriptions into your table. So the genes that you're given in the results are basically just numbers. Yeah, then we extract the significant genes. So the genes that are significantly differently expressed between the conditions, and you can order it by p-value adjusted value so that you can see the ones that are most significantly expressed at the top. Um, subset normalized counts to significant genes. I'm gonna have to ask her about that one. Stuff like heat maps, volcano plots, um, expression plots, basically just visualizing the results. That's that's basically what I've done and like looking at it now I'm literally like there's basically not even 200 lines of code and this took me months to get to this point. Now that I've probably bored you to death, um, I'm gonna basically just go through my code and replace some of the conditions. So basically I've compared two conditions to no treatment already and that's answered two of the research questions that I have but there is one other one for now, I think, um, that I need to answer and I need to basically compare a different set of conditions for that. Let's get started, I guess. I have like 10 minutes before my meeting. I'm really hoping that I can just whiz through it because it's literally just, is there a way to replace a certain phrase? 
how to replace a certain phrase throughout a whole R code. specified or not which one this did you have this type thing here or did i write it i think you wrote it finished with the meeting um it was basically she actually explained the stuff that i wanted to ask her about shrinkage i need to look over it myself again because i asked her to explain it twice and i still kind of surface level don't really get it but i feel like i just need to go through it myself and try and like digest what she said um, I ran the other set of conditions that I tried to quickly change. Turns out I made a few mistakes. It's when like you forget to change one like phrase and then it's like ugh, the whole thing doesn't work. But I'm gonna go back and fix that and then run it again and have a look at the results. There's another thing that I need to do. Like I need to make another set of graphs. So yeah, that's what we're gonna get to now. I'm actually reconsidering what I've done. I could run all four conditions together, but I don't know. I don't know. Should I try? I'm gonna try, because it would make it easier if everything was in one place. I didn't ask for two of them. There's no label. What am I plotting? What do you mean the figure margins are two? Hmm. Fuck's sake. Honestly, so much of this is trial and error. It severely concerns me. What does it mean? Figure margins are too large. Why? This is around the time where I paste the error into Google and try and figure out what went wrong. Does that mean I can change my limits? Because that looks shit. Um, eight. Let's go for eight. I think R is crashing on me. Cool. Also, on a scale of one to ten, how ridiculous do I look? I thought we would go for the professional vibe today, but I just look ridiculous. <laughs> Something went wrong. <laughs> Something went very wrong. I didn't have that graph before. Why? What have I done? I, I did something. Oh, I, I think I know what I've done. We figured it out, ladies and gentlemen. It is fine. In fact, I did have that graph before. So. We have reached Magda tries to analyze results time. So <laughs> I have my heat map. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So there's a set of genes that are similar between these two conditions. They're really like they're similar shades on the heat map, which suggests to me that in fact half of it ish is similarly expressed. I don't know if this is right or not. Let me, let me run this one. These two are actually very similar. Okay, I'm happy now, okay. I love, I'm explaining this to myself at this point. Condition X, they're supposing, produces the same effect as condition Y. Therefore, the genes that are really differently expressed in condition X should be the genes that are differently expressed in condition Y. 
for them to be able to do the same thing. So that makes sense. My report is going to sound so bad. <laughs> I just, I can't do the scientific explanation. Like I get surface level what is going on. I just can't put it into words. So it's similar actually. X limb C minus 12, 12. And then press add and then rejig it. I'm just going to end this video here because the lighting is just becoming worse and worse. Um, it's getting really dark now and I need to go and eat. But there's still a bunch of stuff that I need to get done. So that's fun. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video though. I don't know. I tried to like do something different with like the angles and everything. Um, I don't know how this is going to turn out at all, to be honest. Um, but yeah, if you do like this video and you want more like it, then do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. The button is below this video. I, I don't know. I don't think anyone actually gives a flying bleep about what I'm doing, but I thought it would be fun. I don't know. And I know that it was really vague. Um, but I feel like that's the best I could do given the circumstances. I don't know. Yeah. Probably doesn't mean anything to anyone but me, but cool. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Um, sorry that you had to sit through basically me rambling for however long. Um, but yeah, I will see you in my next video. Bye.